Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Over the past few weeks, we've seen COVID-19 spread around the globe. Here in Canada, 93 cases have been reported, and on Monday, one person died. Before we go any further, I want to extend my sincere condolences to their family and friends. Our thoughts are with them as they navigate through this difficult time. As we saw an uptick in the total number of cases around the globe, we took additional steps. Last week, we announced a special committee, chaired by Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, to manage the federal response to the outbreak. We've also put in place screening measures at airports. We've increased testing at the National Microbiology Laboratory. We've invested in research. We've bolstered support for health services in Indigenous communities. But the reality is that the number of people affected by the virus around the globe keeps climbing. Canada has been fortunate so far. We have not seen a drastic spike in the number of cases reported, but I know that people across the country are worried. Worried about their health. Worried about their aging parents. Worried about the kind of impact this virus could have on their job, on their business. Since day one, our government has been following the situation very closely. We have a responsibility to make sure Canada is ready for all scenarios, and we take that responsibility extremely seriously. That's why today we're announcing a comprehensive package to address the impacts of COVID-19 on our country and to keep Canadians safe. Our government will be creating a billion-dollar COVID-19 response fund, which will provide money to the provinces and territories to deal with preparation and mitigation for the virus. I want all Premiers and all Canadians to know our government is here for you. We will make sure you have everything you need. The fund will provide $200 million to support the ongoing federal response to the virus, including more money for things like surgical masks and face shields, increased capacity for services to Indigenous people and other federal health care responsibilities, and for continued public education efforts to Canadians. It will also invest $275 million in additional funding for research and medical countermeasures, including vaccine development and support for clinical trials. On the economic front, our government understands the disruptive impact the virus is having on businesses and workers. That's why we will waive the mandatory one-week waiting period for employment insurance to kick in. We're also introducing, among other things, special measures under the Work Sharing Program to help employers who fall on hard times due to COVID-19. Let me be clear. No one should have to worry about their job if they have to be quarantined. No employer should feel like they have to lay off a worker because of the virus. We can support you, and we will. Today's announcement is significant, but we are already preparing to do more if need be. Should businesses face a cash crunch in the short term, they can easily access credit to bridge to better times. We will work with our financing crown corporations through the Business Credit Availability Program to protect jobs and to be there for businesses. I know that people are worried about what they're seeing on the nightly news and what it means for their community. We get it, and we're on it. We're working with our international partners to contain the virus. We're applying the lessons we learned during the SARS outbreak. We're making sure our health care systems are resilient. We are pulling out all the stops to make sure Canadians stay safe, healthy, and supported. Canada is among the best prepared countries in the world to respond to the situation we're facing. We will get through what comes next together. 